Hey guys, just wanted to provide you an update with the RTX 3090 benchmarks. So I recently discovered that um, the OBS Studio recording gameplay was affecting the frames per second in, in games. So uh, it was about a 10 to 15 FPS performance hit. So what does that mean? It means that, for example, Asgard's Wrath actually runs at a smooth 75 FPS now and uh, Phantom Covert Ops almost runs at smooth 75 with some dips into the high 60s. Um, Assetto Corsa averages 62 to 65 FPS so about 10 FPS higher than what you saw in the previous video. So recently I did some overclocking with my 3090. Basically I used MSI Afterburner and followed this overclocking tutorial from user benchmark and I was able to increase my core clock frequency to plus 100 megahertz and I was able to increase memory clock to plus 150 megahertz without uh, games crashing. Here are my user benchmark results before and after overclocking. So as you can see, before overclocking, I had 212% score. And after overclocking, I got 220% outstanding. So it's quite a big difference. Now in Port Royal, you can see that before I had about 12,900. And now after overclocking, I have 13,600. So overclocking does improve the performance by at least a few frames or, or more. And so when I did the overclocking and then I, um, I changed the USB port on my external SSD because it turns out that I had a slow SSD in one of the ports during previous benchmarks. So when I changed ports, the speed was faster. So if you take the overclocking into account, the increased um, SSD speed, then I thought, okay, maybe that's why it's now running smooth 75 FPS. But I later realized that it's actually that the OBS Studio, when it's recording gameplay, drops 10 to 15 FPS in, in performance. And um, I also tested some additional games, such as Elite Dangerous. It was um, around 30 FPS, and that's with parallel projection enabled. I've tried reducing super sampling to 66%. I've tried other things, but seems elite dangerous still struggles dcs also struggles at about 35 fps now dcs is a cpu bound game so any games that are cpu bound will have this uh, problem i also tried dirt rally 2 and i got about 65 to 70 fps with an average of 67 fps so slightly better than the average of 62 fps in Assetto Corsa. So overall, it's about uh, 10 to 15 fps that you should add to both the 2080 Ti and the 3090 uh, benchmark video that I did. So that means that on the 2080 Ti, Pavlov actually runs smoother than what you saw and so does uh, Boneworks and, and other games. So overall, the 3090 is about a 10 to 15 FPS performance improvement in general for any games that are not CPU bound. And so that's about a 20 to 30% performance improvement. Now, if you're asking, should I buy a 2080 Ti or a 3080 or a 3090, well, first off, keep in mind that it really depends on what headset you own. With the Pimax 8KX, it has 4K resolution, and I run it at large field of view, which is about 160 degrees. 
in large field of view, there is um, more pixels being rendered. So it's a more demanding headset in general. If I switch to normal FOV, which is about, uh, I think 20 degrees less field of view than large, then I would definitely get a much better performance improvement. So it really depends on which VR headset you own. It depends on um, your GPU, but also your settings. Are you okay with uh, every graphical setting maxed out, or do you not mind if some settings are reduced slightly, but to still get a great image quality? So 2080 Ti handles most games on the 8KX perfectly fine, but for some games, the 10 to 15 FPS increase is enough to get you to a smooth frame rate in certain instances. So it's, it's definitely worth it in, in that sense if you would like that. Now, comparing the 2080 Ti to 3080, you can see on user benchmark that there's about a 4% performance improvement. And uh, a 2080 Ti versus 3090 is about a 20% performance improvement. And between 3080 and 3090 is about 15% performance. So if you get a 3080 as an upgrade to 2080 Ti, I don't expect you to get much improvement, but um, the 3090 is definitely a much bigger improvement, but much higher cost. So if you are satisfied with your 2080 Ti, I would recommend waiting until a new generation. So thanks for watching guys and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned because I will be reviewing some new mods for the Pimax 8KX that make it the most comfortable headset I've ever used. So stick around for that as well.